Meanwhile, Israel is hosting what's been called the largest ever multinational air force exercise. More than a hundred fighter planes taking part. The combat training came just a couple of months after another large-scale military drill conducted jointly with the U.S. And with the parliamentary election just around the corner, a growing number of Israelis are questioning such huge expense on war games, as artist Paula Sleer explains. Israel and the United States are sharing military drills bigger than any they've done in the past, thousands of troops and millions of dollars. But with social grievances that still need to be addressed, and a prime minister looking for votes ahead of early January elections, Israelis are asking themselves yet again if Netanyahu has his priorities straight. Netanyahu, he's a capitalist. And under his term, as we saw in the last few years, the cleavage between poor and rich will grow. The big elephant in the room is the defense budget. Israeli military spending was not supposed to grow more than 1.5% a year. But those figures have more than doubled in the last three years alone. And now, after an eight-day war with Hamas in Gaza, the defense establishment is pushing for even more money. Netanyahu's chances of a victory come January are high, and Tel Aviv's homeless are preparing themselves for more of the same. Joseph Ben Shmuel arrived at this tent city with nothing more than the clothes on his back and a tank of gasoline threatening to set himself on fire. I want what is owed to me by the state, nothing more, nothing less. I served my country as a soldier and I will stay here to the end. I do not fear death, I saw it in the army many times, but is this what I deserve? His tears echo the pain and abandonment people here feel. The government has no time for us. There is money, there is a lot of money to help people like us, but Netanyahu couldn't care less. He will win again, I know this, but it will be the same. It's a disgrace. Prime Minister Netanyahu has formed committees to deal with the demands of anti-austerity protesters, but they complain he hasn't taken a single concrete step to address their concerns. I think we need to invest more in social issues, housing and cost of groceries and keep the security budget in proportion. The security of society is more important, not less important than the security uh, of Israel. But the voice on the street is drowned out by the rumble of weaponry and Tel Aviv's obsession in showcasing its military prowess. Paul Svier RT, Tel Aviv. Сегодня женское движение Фэмон протестует против гомофобии, которая распространяется лично Папой Римским. И сегодня наш месседж к Папе Римскому закрой свой.
Suchet. Uh, the right to a preemptive nuclear strike against China is now part of U.S. law. That's uh, thanks to the National Defense Authorization Act. The Pentagon's also ordered a thorough review of when and how the U.S. could strike at the network of tunnels are believed to hold Beijing's atomic arsenals. We'd better get into this right now. James Corbett joins us live on the program, the editor of a Japan-based news website. Uh, Mr. Corbett, a pleasure to see you. Thanks for coming on so quickly. Uh, the U.S. government is operating on the assumption that there are 3,000 miles worth of tunnels crisscrossing China, allegedly containing three thousand nuclear warheads. Do you believe it? Well, I'm not even sure that the U.S. government really believes it. This is really on the back of a study that was commissioned out of uh, Georgetown University uh, last year, or two years ago now, that uh, found that in this network of tunnels that we do know exist, and we can see from uh, satellite telemetry, we do know that the, these tunnels exist, and it's uh, just sheer speculation about what exists within them at this point. Uh, U.S. intelligence estimates puts the Chinese nuclear arsenal something like 300, but this uh, this study out of Georgetown in 2011 estimated that it could house as many as 3,000 nuclear warheads. So basically, as part of the NDA 2013, uh, they're basically saying that uh, now their Stratcom is going to have to commission a report to uh, identify the potential problems involved in this and whether or not they'll be able to uh, to actually confront this uh, with conventional or even nuclear forces in the event that they actually need to, uh, Indeed, to they're, take they're out certainly, they're, they're certainly assessing how exactly, how, how big are these tunnels, how many warheads are in this tunnel. The previous reports had said 300, not 3,000. Now, we've got uh, most of America's ballistic submarine fleet operating in the Pacific. Uh, we've also got more U.S. ships moving in that area. The Pentagon all the while promising to contain China and now planning for what they say a possible nuclear strike. Well, that's not exactly going to help already strained relations, is it? It really isn't. I, I don't think that we have to look at this report in the context of they're going to move in with a nuclear strike right at this, this point, but I think it has to be seen as a wider part of uh, U.S. nuclear policy that's been stretching up for decades now, trying to come up with ways to justify the existence of some of the U.S.'s existing nuclear arsenal and looking for ways to create new weapons. So, for example, the, uh, we have the B-61-11 nuclear bunker busters that, the, with a 400 kiloton yield that they've been uh, harboring and, and talking about for, for the better part of a decade now in relation to Iran and trying to bust through into Iran's nu underground nuclear facilities or alleged nuclear facilities. Now they're just shifting that rhetoric over to the Asia-Pacific as part of this Asia-Pacific pivot. I think to a certain extent this is just to justify the existence of the U.S. arsenal and to make sure that things like the New Starts, the Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty, uh, basically gets scuttled before it really gets off the ground. And there's a lot in this new NDAA that really seeks to undermine the president's ability, should he ever want to, to actually reduce the nuclear stockpile. So I think the uh, the Congress is definitely trying to get their foot in the door and stop any types of arms reductions before it can actually be implemented. There are certainly some that already say that uh, the American president is powerless when it comes to going head-to-head -head with the military-industrial uh, complex. Uh, certainly at this point, though, we've been getting reports uh, that uh, there have been some rather peculiar high-altitude jet forays between China and Japan. Uh, some uh, Japanese jets uh, t uh, tailing Chinese jets, basically playing some high-altitude games of cat and mouse, uh, possibly reigniting uh, another territorial dispute. They've been having disputes for quite some time now, certainly over some particular islands. Is it possible that those two could get involved in something uh, slightly more intense? It certainly could, and of course, the more bellicose that the U.S. becomes against China, the more safe Japan will seem, uh, will feel in in either threatening or responding to Chinese uh, aggression. So, I think it really only ser serves to uh, put a, a a match next to this this ke powder keg that is the Asia Pacific region, especially now that uh, that really this is heating up and and that the American attention is turning here. I think we're going to see more and more of this type of uh, these types of situations coming along that could justify even further military uh, intervention. So we have to look at these types of nuclear uh, uh, rhetoric that's coming out right now, not necessarily as the, uh, an intent to strike anytime soon, but certainly as something to keep our eyes on as this uh, rhetoric continues to ratchet up. Well, as you well know, Mr. Corbett, uh, the U.S. has been increasing its military presence in the Asia-Pacific region for quite some time now, certainly over the past two years, uh, increasing it in, in somewhat called fairly drastic measures. Now a report of them examining possibly 3,000 miles uh, loaded with nuclear warheads crisscrossing China. I'm sure certainly at the very least conspiracy theorists are going to have a field day with this. Uh, James Corbett uh, of the uh, editor of a Japan-based uh, news website, The Corbett Report, thank you for coming on today.